Today it's time to take on a club that people know used to be huge. I am talking about Sunderland. The counterpart to Newcastle United is struggling and Newcastle United fans are loving it. My editor is a Newcastle United fan. Biscuit, how much do you love it? <laughs> Yeah, there you go, guys. We need to talk about them, though. Sunderland, right now, as we speak, in the championship, are sat in the 11th position, and that, my friends, is clearly unacceptable. So, we're going to take them on and rebuild them and see if we can overtake Newcastle and how quickly we can actually pull that off. So, when it comes to the Sunderland side, we are seeing a couple of names that you guys might remember. Gellard, a big talent from Leeds United, the biggest talent in this team alongside Diallo. Diallo is, is actually the biggest talent. Manchester United's big boy coming in here and playing for Sunderland as we speak. But none of those two are the top performers this season. Clark, well, hello there, chaps. Is the main man for this Sunderland team right now. I believe he has seven goals and six assists. That is very good. Diallo has eight goals, though, so he's obviously clearly doing well. But what I really like about this team is that there are a lot of youngsters within it, especially this guy right here is only 22. So we can definitely build up a couple of these players to be the next big thing. And that's something I love. But the issue is that the most valuable players in this squad right now are only loaned in. So it just showcases that after this season, we definitely will have to pull some strings to replace them. I cannot believe this is the guy's name. Oh, no. Smell it. Mm. <laughs> well, um... Let's try and avoid saying his name during gameplay. We have sold a couple of players to bring in a better budget. We now have 11 million to play with, and I actually have to actively start thinking about if I want to let go of some of the players that are loaned in to the club, or if I actually want to sign him on a permanent deal. That's another thing that we need to look at. But generally speaking, Pritchard has left, Onion has left, Bath has gone. The man whose name shall never be uh, said in a video is gone, and then Evans is gone as well i know he's the captain but guys this is a fifa rebuild so let's have fun so this is how the team is looking right now i don't want to stick to gellart i don't want to keep him but diallo by the numbers based on the numbers he's putting onto the uh, real life performances he is probably someone that i should try and sign on a permanent deal i will try it now so yes there it is i have done the deal and i've done it for basically his value we have brought him in for four million he was valued at 3.9 manchester united say goodbye to Ahmad diallo he is now part of sunderland properly so gellard is the only one that we have here that is someone I'm willing to let go. And I didn't realize that we have some really good players on the bench here as well. Stewart, 25 years old. Lihaji, big talent. I remember he played at Lille, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have this Benetta guy who is 18 years old from Costa Rica. So bench-wise, we're looking solid. The next player I'm bringing in is someone that probably and most possibly no one knows of. But I was looking into football stats before the season began in the Dutch division. Don't ask me why. It had something to do with Zorair. But I saw that Bart van Rooij is one of the better fullbacks when it comes to talents in that division. And he is a player that currently plays at NEC Nijmegen. And that is a club I am willing to bring him in from. And he is going to be a big upgrade in that right back position, I believe. So he comes in with a 68 rating. Do not get me wrong. This guy does not have super high potential. Probably should have much higher potential. I expect it to be higher in the next FIFA. But Van Rooij is coming into the team as a 21-year-old, 5'9 tall with 80 pace and very good ability to move forward. So he's going to be supporting Diallo on that right side. And these are the types of transfers I just love making, man. Next up is a player I've never used before, but has some insane total stats on him. He is basically good in anything and everything on the pitch. And I'm talking about Castriot Imeri. This guy plays for young boys in Switzerland. In the past 15 matches, he apparently got five goal contributions. So I'm very excited to welcome him into the squad as what is his rating bro is he actually 70 no 69 rating <laughs> so at cam he actually goes up to a 71 it looks like but i need him to be a center mid now michu do not get me wrong this guy's supposed to be a big talent he's loaned in from psg but i don't care about players loaned in i care about players that are going to stay here and this guy 
you can clearly tell is a beast. I feel like we can turn this man that probably not many know into an unreal player that scores loads of goals coming in from that center midfield position. I'm very, very tempted to put, it, put him into the center attacking midfield spot, but I just do not have the money to then go ahead and buy another center mid. Oh boy, this is such a big improvement. Ajibola Alessio, who apparently is one of the better players for Sunderland this season. I've turned him from a left back to a center back and he's gone up to a 68 massive the season is finished so let's take a look at where we end up in our first year with the lads <laughs> oh <laughs> okay um yeah so we're going down into league one <laughs> i don't think we remember have we had this before surely at some point we did but Okay, so we're going down to League One, guys. Uh, stay calm. We have Stewart up top with Roberts and Cam now. Clark and Diallo, I've been changing their positions to wingers. They're going to go up by plus one. Neil and Imeri looking good. I guess the team just wasn't good enough to compete in the championship. Everyone has to be above 70 to be able to compete there. You have former Premier League sides in those divisions. So I guess it kind of makes sense. So... Here goes the rating of Diallo. He goes up to a 76. And here comes Clark going up to a 75 and just needing one week to go up to a 76 as well. Stats wise, Stewart, the main man, uh, Leeds United actually recalled Gellard. And uh, yeah, 11 goals for him, 8 and 8 for Clark, which is great. Roberts has done well. The former Manchester City talent, I remember. And then Diallo with the 10 goal contributions as well. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going down before going up. <laughs> it is what it is. So I'm trying to level up the squad. How about bringing in Leveling? Yes, that's his name. We are bringing in a German named Leveling and he is going to be the main man. Union Berlin at the moment have a great squad and Jamie Leveling is the one that I can take out of it. So this man comes in as a 75 rated player. He's going to be great. He has the pace, the shooting, the dribbling, four star weak foot. I love that. I personally actually only know him as a winger, so I'm surprised that he's a striker now. But Diallo, Leveling and Clark in League One sounds insane. So for me, that is a great addition to the club. And the fact that I've been given a 15 million budget despite going down, I appreciate that, Sunderland. Inter have a talent that they love to loan out and not necessarily give play time to. It is Colidio. And Colidio is becoming a player for our team right now. He plays for Tigre. I believe it's a team in Argentina. There is also a team that is called Tigres. That is the one in Mexico, but he plays for the one in Argentina and he comes into our team. Facundo Colidio is the man for this squad. So let's take a look at his stats. Roberts, I appreciate you, but I do need an upgrade. I do need to get to the next stage and this man could be the one to do so. He is capable of playing striker. So that showcases me. We have a center attacking midfielder right here that is going to be able to get the assist, but most importantly, get the goals as well. So I really like this addition into the, into the club and someone I haven't used yet this year. So I'm excited to welcome Colidio into the team right behind leveling alongside Diallo and Clark. That attack is really looking good. Next up, the transfer I'm bringing in is a goalkeeper. I cannot be having that many goals conceded. I appreciate that we had a goalkeeper that was actually a decently talented one, but I needed an upgrade. So it is Pandur, a player that is originally playing for Hellas Verona, but right now, as we speak, he's playing in Netherlands for Fortuna Sittard, a team that is struggling defensively and needs him all the time. I know that because I got him on so rare. And this guy does a decent job. He's a good goalkeeper. He comes in with a 74 rating. That's a plus three upgrade on that goalkeeping spot. Yes, I'm aware I could have kept our original goalkeeper and just grown him through this League One season, but I want to come into the championship strong. So, Pandur, welcome to the club. Six foot two, Croatian. Let's take this season on. We have dominated enough in League One. That was to be expected. Let's be honest with each other. But the big question is, has the form that we now have had in this season 
helped the team to improve because you'd expect a team that goes down and gets relegated to possibly not do as well in terms of growth. But here is the squad, my friend. Leveling 80, Diallo 83, Colidio 80, Clark 82. But then obviously it goes down. I like the fact that Imeri is up to a 77, but you can see that others have not done as well. Even though, having said that, Ballard looks very good right here. I think next up, we have to bring in a new center back into the team. Definitely defensively and possibly in midfield, we need to improve. Pandur has gone up to a 77, which is going to be good enough in the championship as well. And by the time we get into the Premier League, I assume he's going to be 80 rated. So that's going to be important. So to be able to make it, into like back-to-back -back promotion we need to improve next season the transfers are going to be very important diallo 26 and 11 leveling 23 and 11 colidio that's why i brought him in man goals and assists and clark 20 and 5 even imeri has jumped in and done his job this is exactly what i expected nothing less so now Back into the championship. Arsenal's new signing hasn't had much playtime yet, so it's a perfect opportunity to take on Jakub Kivior. Sorry, Jakub Kivior. He used to play at Spezia, just recently signed for Arsenal as a backup centre back and hasn't been able to establish himself in any way yet. Obviously, with Gabriel and Saliba playing, with others also occupying positions ahead of him, it's quite tough for him. But I believe in this kid. I think he is a great talent and he will take over the left centre-back position. So there it is. He is a 76-rated left-footed centre-back with a decent amount of pace, good defending and physicality. The Polish 6'2 tall centre-back is going to take over for us there now. Now, and I do believe probably should upgrade. I feel like I want to upgrade McNeil. But then having said that, he's an original of the squad and he's 22 years old. So I'm kind of sat here thinking, what's the next step? Maybe this guy? I mean, he's 22 as well. But you know what? I kind of want to replace him more than McNeil. McNeil has been our captain for quite some time now. A new left back in the name of Jacobs is coming into the team right here. I wanted to improve the team, even if it is just a slight improvement. And I wanted to keep Van Rooij. I know he is not higher rated than our left back, but I want to give him the chance. I want to build him up because I'm fully aware that Van Rooij has a very low potential, generally speaking. But I want to take him to that next level. So Jacobs comes in as a, let's see, 78 rated left back. That is a plus two upgrade. I was kind of hoping he'd be at least 77 or you know, 77 is what, what I kind of expected, but I love to see that his stats look amazing right here. This guy is 20, 24 years old from Senegal, and that is a good improvement for our defense once more. Now, I don't have any money left because I am fully aware now that we're back in the championship, some of these players want more money on their wages. Back to back promotion. That is what we do. Sunderland is coming for you, Newcastle. Be aware. 113 points. That is an incredible season. Only three losses in this year. And this is the squad. Clark, 87 rated. You know what? Since he's the best performer in real life, I'll give it to him. Clark is the captain now. Leveling up to an 83. Colidio, 84. Diallo, 86. Neil, 80. Let's go. Imeri is actually behind him now. Jacob's up to an 82. Kivior looks good. Ballard looks good. Van Rooij, yes. 79. And then Pandur on the 83. Now, the thing is... I'm going to be getting a lot of money going into this new season since we are moving into the Premier League. So some players might have to drop down to the bench. I'm sorry, lads. We are playing in the big league now and I need big boy players for it. So leveling, top scorer. But Colidio has gotten, what is it? 39 goal contributions in 48 games. This guy is on fire. Clark, 19 and 10, looking solid as well. So in general, you can tell... This attack is Premier League ready. As we speak, I am watching Bayern Munich play versus PSG. So you guys are going to see my reaction. Obviously, I'm hoping for Bayern and Musiala to go through into the next round. So far, it's 0-0. But on aggregate, Bayern is going through. And we are bringing in Van der Son, guys. He is going to be a big player for us. Van der Son comes in 
from Arsenal. Apparently, he plays for Arsenal now. But obviously, since we are a Premier League club now, we need to upgrade that defense. But sadly, this is the only transfer I can make. Good thing is, Van Rooij is going to be a great addition onto the bench. So the bench is probably something that we need to start focusing on very soon. But this is a big upgrade. 83 rated, can basically do anything and possibly even play in right wing. But for us... He's going to be the right back, Van der Son. I got to say, this game is looking great so far. Some big moments already between Bayern and PSG. And lads, this is our first season in the Premier League finished. So, seventh. I'll take that. That is a great result considering that we just got promoted. 62 points. That's only 16 behind Arsenal who have won the league and beat us in the last game of the season. But this is our squad now. 86 up top, 89 on the left, 89 on the right. Colidio looks incredible. Neil and Emery holding down that midfield, both above 80, obviously. Jacobs looks very good alongside Van der Son as well. And then Ballard in that 84 rating and Kivior is not necessarily on the same level yet. And Pandur got injured. Ooh, that sucks. That is not ideal. And then going in here, what do we have? 22 and 2, 20 and 10, 17 and 3, and Colidio with the 12 and 12. Our attack is truly one team should be scared of. I've just trusted my team and signed a bunch of free agents. That's the, that's the strategy I want to follow with this team. So you can see the players coming in right here. Romeo has come in, Knezevic has come in who looks great, Carillo with the 76, Schneider with the 78 as a replacement for Colidio if necessary. Then we have Barnes as a centre-back and Hartmann as a goalkeeper. We already had players like Van Roge and these guys right here, so I just made a point in bringing in a couple more. So we played in a conference league and lost against Volendam. Volendam is like one of the worst teams in the Netherlands. How did that happen? That's a big letdown for a team that has so many high-rated players and a team that has just qualified for Champions League football. I mean, the progression is nice to see. It's a plus six or six points off of the first position. But still, like how am I losing against Volendam makes no sense to me because that is my team. I trusted my boys. And they are growing. Imeri 86, Kivior 86, Ballard 86. Goalkeeper not injured anymore. And Bayern inside the box and should have scored and didn't. I can't believe it. No penalty as well. Ridiculous. Oh, hold on. There's another chance. Go on. No. It's, it's not happening. What a freaking game. This game is absolutely insane. Two clearances off the line for De Ligt already. He's having the game of a lifetime. But hey. This is my team. And now we're going to go over to the performances. Sorry, lads. Had to obviously go ahead and watch that real quick. But 25 and 3, 18 and 13, 17 and 9, 17 and 7. Again, the attack is doing their job. It will just come down to how fast can we get these defenders to grow. Plus three in this season is good enough for me. This next season... They're going to become world class. We have gotten past Inter in the round of 16. And now possibly Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. Taking on AC Milan in the semifinals. And the big question as well is, how are we doing in the Premier League? Are we doing well enough to beat everyone and be on top? Champions League finalists. That is huge. Beating Manchester City. Beating Leeds and West Ham and Newcastle to finish the season. That is the result Sunderland fans would love to see. The final match of the season is the one against Newcastle and they win it. Is that the one to actually win the title as well? Come on, Sunderland. Yes, look at that. First in the Premier League, absolutely incredible. Newcastle down in 11th and Bayern Munich are now Two goals up against PSG on aggregate, and it is a beauty to watch. I love it. I am so happy right now. Chupo Muting has done it, lads. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. It looks like PSG is going to be failing once again. Should this project just be ended? Like, honestly, should we just end this thing? This, this PSG thing that they try to build up year on year and just keep on failing? I gotta say, it makes me very happy when I see teams like City or PSG just not win the Champions League. It just really, really makes me feel good when traditional clubs who have been successful there already 
get it done. Having said all that, leveling 38 and 3, Colidio 27 and 16, Clark 20 and 16, Diallo with the 15 and 11, and Vanderson, the right back, has joined in on the attack. And that, my friends, is our team that will be playing in a Champions League final. It is a beautiful, beautiful squad that is fully prepared to take anyone on. Everyone five star, five star? Yep, that's what I like to see. Beautiful stuff. Let's get it on, man. I am fully prepared. And so it begins. PSG. Today, I know for a fact that they have been kicked out by Bayern Munich. It feels amazing to see Bayern do well. Musiala, the golden boy, they lift with an incredible performance. Players like Thomas Müller picking up the man of the match when you have Messi and Mbappe on the field. That is what Bayern is about. It's about the team performance. So, guys, what are we thinking about PSG, man? It's not looking good, honestly. That project is just failing over and over again. Leveling finds Colidio again. Down the left we go. Here goes Clark. Inside, it's Colidio. Turn, finish, save. Big steal by McNeil. Is his name even McNeil? I don't know if it is. I think it's just Neil, huh? Oh, no. How can I leave Mbappe so open? Do I take him down or do I not? It's 1-0 PSG. How is he so open? Why is my defensive line so far up front? This, this feels like I'm playing Liverpool in real life at like the beginning of the season. I need someone to run inside and the other one to stay outside. That's what we do, guys. We need to work together. Inside. Pass. Finish. Pen. Referee, that's a pen. Are you kidding me? He just shoulder passed it. Come on. Come on, Diallo. Good steal. Right before half time. This could be such a crucial moment. There goes the run of Clark. Clark, the original of the squad. 1v1. Yes! What a moment that is. Right before half time. PSG. We're in their heads now. That's how it goes. Clark, the original, has done it. That's always a beautiful thing. Get in, lad. El Capitan. Oh, slight tackles, huh? Aggressive slight tackles. I see you. It's leveling. Down to Clark again. Clark. 1v1. This is what he does. Into leveling. Good pass. Diallo. Left foot. Golasso. Right at the end of half time. And now right after the beginning of the second one. Yes, mate. What a finish. The attack built up on the left through our captain once again. This time, Diallo is the one to strike it into the back of the net. Donnarumma and PSG are not a happy bunch. You gotta be a team to win these types of games. You can't be a bunch of individuals. Oh, oh, Mbappe. Whoa, what the? Bro, what were those, those movements? They were incredible by Mbappe, I gotta admit. Yes. Big steal by Jacobs. And down the left we go with Clark again. Leveling. Making a beautiful run. What a ball that is, man. He cuts in and scores. We have officially leveled up Sunderland. 75th minute. It's done. Cut it off, referee. Last minute. That's mine. Come on. Pick it up then, PSG. It won't. You just won't. Since Biscuit is my editor and is a Newcastle fan, I just want to say I would like to apologize to absolutely nobody. Clark is going to be lifting the trophy for Sunderland. Newcastle fans, watch out. Here it is. Bang. Yes. Hey, you got to leave it to the Sunderland fans. Let them have the success in the virtual world, guys. You have it in a real world. So Sunderland has done it. It's a beautiful moment with an original of the squad lifting that trophy. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I really enjoyed myself. Have a great day. Take care and peace. <laughs>